This is either a really good idea or a really bad idea. I think it's too early to tell, but I'd be curious what you're thinking right now uh, down below. I think the we're going to break down the situation in just a moment. Uh, I think there is some potential here. Uh, I think, but I, I think everyone's trying to, I think that Sony's trying to build a Spider-Verse with one arm tied behind its back. I think having Tom Holland in the MCU is, I think in the long run, I don't know, it's really good for Tom Holland and it's good for his standalone Spider movies. It's tough though, because Venom did a, like really well and Spider-Verse won an Oscar, even though its box office was only like well, it was not so great, but I think it's done very well in the ancillary market. But, you know, you don't really have a cohesive situation here. And I don't know if it ever will be, to be honest with you. As I said with the Olivia Wilde story the other day, maybe the Spider-Verse's hero is Spider-Woman. Uh, or maybe it's Miles Morales, the live action Miles Morales. Uh, will they just develop a Spider Verse that doesn't have anything to do with Tom Holland? Although, how much longer is he going to be? Was he going to be Spider Man forever? He could be. He could be. We've never really gotten our adult Spider Man, and Tom Holland could do that over in the MCU. Because I don't think Tom Holland really wants to be in the Spider Verse, to be honest with you. Or he would have done a voice in uh, the Spider Verse animated movie. Uh, so let's let's break it down. Also. Uh, Amazon is the player in, in question here, and Amazon is still, you know, Jeff Bezos is like the wealthiest man in the world, but in terms of uh, a streaming service for entertainment, they're, they're kind of like, you know, they have some hits, but they're not really like, you know, it's still hard to get these things off the ground to really get people talking about them. So maybe this will do it though. People do tend to follow Marvel wherever it goes. All right, so the best thing to come out of this, of course, is more Asian representation. We love to see it. Every time I talk about cult, you know, representing other groups, uh, usually, you know, it's usually been about uh, the black community, but every single time without fail, people, I think, understandably say, what about the Asian community? What about the Hispanic community? Well, the Asian community is getting on the board big time, because after Crazy Rich Asians and Always Be My Maybe, loved Always Be My Maybe, things are starting to really uh, start starting to really move in Hollywood. We've got Disney with several properties because Disney found out there's money in this. Mulan hitting Disney Plus tomorrow. Their Shang Chi for Marvel coming up next year. Raya and the Last Dragon at their in their animation division. And then of course all the other work Aquafina is getting. And then there's the Daniel Day Kim Randall Park heist movie, which sounds fabulous. Also at Amazon. And now Marvel's Silk. This, she's getting her own live action television show. I know some of you thought it was animated. I got a couple tweets about it being animated. We'll talk about Phil Lord and Chris Miller later on in this video. They're the executive producers. So I can see why you maybe thought it was animated because they, of course, do the Spider-Verse movie. Uh, but this is going to be a live action television show, uh, which is going to head up a grouping of shows, which again, I'll explain in a moment. But I do also want to clarify right here, this means that despite rumors slash hopes, Olivia Wilde ain't directing a Silk movie. Like I told you, I told you she was doing a Jessica Drew Spider-Woman movie, and this is just further evidence of that. Silk, Spider-Woman, Spider-Gwen. The number of spider ca Spidey characters is as complicated as the rights to those characters. Because again, as I told you, Sony and Marvel share them. Marvel was bankrupt. They had to sell actually part of the Sony rights, not just like the Spider-Man rights to Sony, not just like the film rights. Uh, and so I'm, I understand it's complicated because Sony gave the merchandise rights back, or sold the rights back to Disney a couple years ago, but it is a mess. It's a mess. And according to Deadline, that's what's holding up a potential deal with Amazon, that it's such a legal ball of string. And Amazon's like, what am I going to do with this? Or what can I do with it? And Sony and Amazon's legal department are trying to figure that out. And if they can unravel it in a way that Amazon feels they're going to get something out of it. So, I mean, I think just a set of Spider-Man shows is pretty good right there. I mean, it's not like Amazon's going around merchandising the shows that they have, even though they do sell merchandise direct to your home. Where's the boys store? I'll tell you where. It doesn't exist, which is stupid. But anyway, uh, although I just thought of that right now, so maybe someone at Amazon will. All right, so Sony wants a set of shows, again, maybe on Amazon if this deal works out, 
like what Marvel did over at Netflix under Jeff Loeb. And that was really successful until, of course, it wasn't. And those shows were all yanked, you know, sometimes mid-development on seasons, uh, in some cases, off of Netflix, and Jeff Loeb was fired as Kevin Feige consolidated his empire. But it was going real well for a while there. And again, it was an abrupt ending. The Iron Fist cliffhanger was as bad as the Sarah Connor Chronicles cliffhanger. It was amazing. It was so bad. That show was, the Iron Fist show was just getting its act together. And then it was over. Now, speaking of Asian representation, many argue that on that show, Danny Rand should have been race bended to be half Asian or Asian American, and that's why he was out of touch with his Asian culture, you know, a- Asian heritage. I thought that was a really strong idea, even though some comic book fans were like, how dare you? I mean, remember, Iron Fist was created in 1974, a very different time than today for a much smaller audience. I think it would have been a great idea, but that, you know, the Iron Fist show was unfortunately ahead of its time, and that idea was shot down. Although it does actually, you know, I've been loath to believe some of the horrible things I've heard about Jeff Loeb and uh, representation, and, you know, the allegations made about from that Daredevil actor. But now that I think about it, Maybe he was right, because he shot, Jeff Loeb shot down that incredible idea of race bending Danny Rand. Oh, I don't want to believe it, but that's more evidence. All right, so anyway, that show, even though, again, it did improve dramatically with season two, it never got over accusations, which I think were somewhat warranted, of cultural appropriation. And so the show just didn't survive. But Jessica Henwick was fantastic on that show. She was fantastic both seasons. And by the way, she was this close to playing Ray for J.J. Abrams. But her consolation prize was an X-Wing pilot instead. And X-Wing pilots are cool. But she didn't really have anything to do because, as John Boyega said, Disney sidelines their Star Wars characters of color. And here is yet more proof. Oh, that's not good. When you start to look at the whole puzzle, it's, it's bad. All right, so anyway, I think Henwick could be a pretty cool Silk, a.k.a. Cindy Moon. Although in the comics, Silk is a Korean-American character, and Asia really is very, you know, sensitive, understandably so, about the different countries there. So Hollywood might be like, oh, who cares? But I think a number of people who they want to watch the show would care. I'm curious, does Cindy Moon's distinct nationality in terms of heritage matter to you? Because I, I really like Jessica Henwick, but I would be nervous about that. Because I think Sony Amazon might want to look for a Korean actress. Now, speaking of Netflix, Laura, Lauren Moon, who has the same last name as the character, from Netflix's Atypical, is the writer here. So, uh, Variety said she's in talks. Deadline said she has the gig. Let's see what happens. But her name's in the mix. As a character, Silk was, has a really cool design. I mean, she looks great. And she got off to a really cool start in the comics. But unfortunately, I actually read her title for a little while. Then it got canceled, and it was supposed to be brought back recently, but then coronavirus. But, you know, the character just never really went anywhere story-wise or even development-wise. I think there was, like, some bunch of Spider People title that was going on for a while that she was in, but I didn't read that. I mean, there's just too many Spidey people, and unfortunately, writers don't develop those Spidey Spider-Man people. They're like, I have an idea for a Spidey person. Let me throw it in there. And you're like, what about this you know, this junk box of spider people that I have that aren't developed already. And why not develop Silk? I mean, she needs as much development as anyone else in that junk box. And she has a very good angle re-representation. It separates her from the other spider characters. Uh, Phil Lord and Chris Miller, again, are exec producing, and they've done a great job with the Spider-Verse so far. They can balance multiple spider people, although why not give one of those characters a show? Uh, And by the way, again, some of you thought this was animated because of their involvement, but don't forget, Phil Lord and Chris Miller have made some great live action movies as well. However, with the eclectic style of animation into the Spider-Verse, could some of the the universes in the Spider-Verse be live action? I wouldn't be surprised. I think it's an interesting idea. So some of the other shows that Sony wants to do could be animated, you know, with Phil Lord and Chris Miller producing. Maybe some are live action, maybe some are animated. Maybe we have a cool world Roger Rabbit crossover event, which would be amazing and very much keeping with the style of that original Spider-Verse movie. Uh, No word on who those other characters would be, but maybe it'll be one of the characters from Spider-Verse. I think that would be cool. So is, I have to ask, though, is the so- and other people should be asking this too, uh, is the Sony Spider-Verse expanding too quickly? Uh, and since it's MCU adjacent, I'm sure it's stressing out the already stressed out Kevin Feige. He's like, Amy, what are you doing over there? Oh, my God. I, you know, you give, you give Amy Pascal a cookie, next she wants a glass of milk. Uh, and she just keeps on going until she's, she's in your bed. Kevin Feige's like, God damn it, wow, this cute little adorable mouse, get in here. 
Amy, uh, Amy Pascal is adorable. I almost called her Amy Feige. And Kevin Feige's like, I knew this was a bad idea. <laughs> and I have to say, though, so far she's done a great job. I think she's done a wonderful job with the spider property so far. Although we have not yet seen Morbius, which I'm nervous about. Uh, and, you know, this seems like awfully an awful lot of expansion. So let's see. I think she's tempting fate, but I'd love to see her succeed. You know, it would be great. So what do you think? Share your thoughts down below. It's early days, so speculate the hell out of it. We have a lot of puzzle pieces, though. So share your thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.